Last time we told the tragic backstory of the Silverdown Sage and how he is able to overcome his weaknesses to become one of the most powerful wizards of the Dwarven Kingdom. This week we'll tell the story of his younger sister and her rise from a simple handmaiden to the chief diplomat of the Dwarven people. Hi everyone, and welcome to another tragic episode of The Dungeon, Dungeon Crashers. Crashers. I'm Guy. And I'm Zapeel. Before we get started, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that bell so you'll be notified when we post our excellent D&D content. We are also coming to an end of our Dwarven party, so after this video, please take a second to vote on our poll to decide what race we are going to be featuring next. Like I said before, this week we will be doing a build for the younger sister of the Silverdown Sage. We are also using a build request from Andrew Haxby. They have a build they call the Orator. It starts as a level 3 Eloquence Bard and a level 2 Peace Cleric. As you know, on the Dungeon Crashers, we will be doing the full level 20 build. They also suggested it being a support character with the Inspiring Leader feat. When I started to think about the concept of this build, I was reminded of a movie, A Knight's Tale, and the Herald character in it named Joffrey Chaucer, played by Paul Bettany. It was an excellent performance, and if you haven't seen the movie, you should. So with that in mind, I started with the backstory. It was supposed to be a joyous occasion, the name day celebration of her older brother. As a young dwarf of, of just 10 years, it was to be her first great feast. It would quickly turn into a time of despair. There was trouble in the mines with some of the miners going missing, and her parents and brothers journeyed to take care of it. It had been weeks since her family went to the mines with no word of their victory. Whispered rumors quickly spread that they had been killed, and word was sent to the elders for aid. Fearing the worst, the elders sent their strongest heroes to find the mine holder's family and put a stop to whatever was causing the trouble. She waited day after day for their return, fearing the worst. Finally, the day arrived, and her fear became a reality. Her parents had been slain by the creature, and as for her brothers, although they had been healed, she could see the trauma written all over their faces. It was decided that she would go live with the leader of the party that saved her brothers, a nobleman and his family. They have a daughter the same age as her, and she is to be the handmaiden of her foster sister and in time her friend. Like the other party members, she is a mountain dwarf. They are medium sized, standing between 4 to 5 feet tall and around 150 pounds, with a movement speed of 25 feet. They have dark vision out to 60 feet, dwarven resilience giving them advantage on saving throws against poison and resistance to the poison damage. They have Dwarven Combat Training, giving them proficiency with Battle Axe, Hand Axe, Light Hammer, and War Hammers. They can choose one tool proficiency from Smith's Tools, Mason's Tools, or Brewer Supplies. They get Stone Cutting. Whenever you make an Intelligence History check related to the origin of stonework, you are considered proficient in the History skill and add double your proficiency bonus to the check. Dwarven Armor Training gives them proficiency with Light and Medium Armor. And last, they get Common and Dwarven as Languages. Moving to a noble house was frightening. She missed her friends and her brothers, and was still grieving the loss of her parents. Life was very different from the life in the mine. Instead of daily work, there was school, where she and her foster sister studied clan history and lore. Although neither of them were great students, she did take well to this studying, finding inspiration in poems and sagas of the clan. She also trained in warfare, as do all young dwarves, but found she lacked skill with axes and hammers, so instructors taught her to use a short sword and other small weapons. As she and her foster sister grew, they became close, but she still missed her family. The occasional visits or communication with her brothers brought her great joy. Finally, her foster sister's 20th name day came around, and it was a grand event. Her foster sister is a brilliant young dwarf walking the path of the Valkyrie. I'll put a link to that video up in the corner at the end of this video. And she will one day soon lead her own war band, and her handmaiden wishes to follow her and support her. She could take the noble background, but we are going to tweak it a little and call it the herald background. It gives the skills history and persuasion, one gaming set, and one language of your choice. We are keeping these from the noble background and changing the main feature. We are taking the features from the entertainer background. The first one is entertainer routines. This background is in the player's handbook and you will find a list there of all the routines. We suggest taking either poet or storyteller. They fit better than the others for this build. For the second feature, it is by popular demand. You can always find a place to perform, usually an inn or a tavern, but possibly with a circus, in a theater, or even a noble's court. At such a place, you receive free lodging and food of a modest or comfortable standard, depending on the quality of the entertainment, if you perform each night. In addition, your performance makes you something of a local figure. 
when strangers recognize you in a town where you have performed, they typically take a liking to you. This will be a big help in information gathering and some RP when you are out on your adventures. <laughs> When the time of her own name day came, her foster family prepared for her a feast no less than they gave for her foster sister. The nobles of the clan gathered to celebrate her, but more importantly, her brothers made the journey to celebrate with her. Her eldest brother brought his wife and their young son, and she was glad to greet them, but she was happy to see her other brother, who was closest to her heart. He was a quiet and sullen dwarf, but for her he always had smiles and stories. She introduced her brothers to her foster family and her friends among the court. Her brother became friendly with her foster sister, and they found occasions to talk during the celebration. At the end, when the celebration had been completed, she sadly went to bid her brothers farewell. But to her delight, the younger of them announced that he would not be leaving, as he had taken a post as a warrior in her foster sister's war band. She was overjoyed that not only would he be staying, she would be adventuring alongside him. And for ability scores, we are using the point-by system. Mountain dwarfs get a plus two on strength and constitution but we're going to use the adjustable ability scores from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. This allows us to put the 2 plus 2 bonuses on any ability score we want, but all of the other racial traits stay the same. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put an 8 on strength. This is going to be strictly a spellcaster, so strength isn't needed. And she's always been small. Her brothers always teased her mm -hmm. that as a baby she was switched with a gnome. Mm -hmm. At 12 on dexterity, she's quick and graceful, and she'll be wearing medium armor and using finesse weapons, so the plus 1 will help. A 14 on constitution, though small for a dwarf, she still has the typical dwarven toughness. This will help with hit points and concentration checks. A 10 on intelligence, while not a skifted scholar like her brother, she is well educated. A 14 on wisdom, making it 16 with our first bonus. She has a great deal of empathy and compassion for others, and also a love for the gods. This will be the casting sat for the cleric spells. And last, a 14 on charisma, making it 16 with the last bonus. She is also charming and well-spoken, and has a beautiful voice for reciting poems and sagas. This will be the casting stat for the bard spells. After the tragedy that happened to her parents, our handmaiden finds herself seeking the comfort of the church. She starts to follow the teachings of Baranar, the goddess of home and family. The goddess brings her comfort and helps ease her grieving. In time, her foster sister takes an interest in the goddess as well, making offerings to the Valkyrie, which are Baranar's servants. At the age of just 15, our heroine begins studying with the priestesses of Baranar, learning the prayers and rituals necessary to become a follower and cleric. She hopes that the goddess will give her the strength to prevent what happened to her parents from ever happening again. At first level cleric, she gets two skills, from history, insight, medicine, persuasion, and religion. Since we already have history and persuasion, we will take insight and religion. She is proficient with all simple weapons, light and medium armor, and shields, as well as wisdom and charisma saves. And clerics get their divine domain at first level, and we're taking peace. They can pick one skill from Insight, Performance, and Persuasion, and she already has the other two, so Performance it is. And she gets the ability Emboldening Bond. It works like Bless, but they can use the D4 on ability checks as well as attack rolls and saving throws, plus it lasts 10 minutes instead of 1. It does take an action to cast, but doesn't use a spell slot, and you can use it proficiency times per day. Clerics are prepared casters and can prepare a number of spells equal to their Wisdom modifier plus Cleric level, so 4 to start. From the Peace Domain, she gets the spells Heroism and Sanctuary always prepared, and they don't count against the number of spells she can prepare. For spells, she gets three cantrips known and two first level spell slots. For cantrips, Guidance is a must. We are always using it in our games. And for the other two, Sacred Flame, Toll the Dead, and Word of Radiance would all be great damaging spells. For her prepared spells, some good choices are Detect Magic, Guiding Bolt, Healing Word, and Shield of Faith. In my experience, Guiding Bolt and Healing Word are essential spells for a low-level cleric and should always be prepared. Yeah. After her name day, she joins her foster sister's warband along with her brother and two other young warriors. One is a handsome young dwarf from a minor but well-respected noble house, and the other is a somewhat surly young warrior who her foster father insisted be included in the group. Though he gives the appearance of being cold and distant, she sees past it and notes that he's actually loyal and devoted and also very brilliant and talented. It might seem strange that a cleric devoted to peace would go off seeking battle, but that is the way of the goddess Baroner. While a priest seeks to bring harmony and unity to her community, it is also her duty to defend it from any who would harm it, by force if necessary. Yeah. The warband quickly sees combat and adventure as the clan has many enemies. During this time, she becomes a second level cleric. At second level, she gets channel divinity, and it has two options. First is a standard turn undead and the second is from the peace domain called Balm of Peace. 
As an action, she can move up to her speed without provoking opportunity attacks, and when she moves within 5 feet of any other creature during this action, she can restore a number of hit points of that creature equal to 2d6 plus her wisdom modifier. A creature can receive this healing only once whenever you take this action. You only get one use of your channel divinity between short or long rests. For spells, she gets one more prepared spell and one more first level spell slot. For the prepared spell, some good choices are Command, Inflict Wounds, or Cure Wounds if the party is still running out of hit points. Yeah. Inflict Wounds is a good spell to use if an enemy gets close, because our heroine is not overly skilled with weapons. She carries a short sword, but is more comfortable fighting with a dagger if she must fight at all. After a few adventures, she has come to admire her friend the Valkyrie and wants to share the tales of their adventures with those who would listen. Having been a long-time student of her people's poems and sagas, she begins writing her own, commemorating the tales of her friend's deeds and telling those tales to all who will listen. And since she has a reputation for being a skilled teller of sagas, there are many who will listen. At third level, she takes first level Bard. You get one skill of your choice, and we are taking Perception. You get Bardic Inspiration. As a bonus action on your turn, you can choose one creature other than yourself within 60 feet who can hear you. That creature gains one Bardic Inspiration die, a d6. Once within the next 10 minutes, that creature can roll the die and add the number rolled to one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw it makes. The creature can wait until after it rolls a d20 before deciding to use the Bardic Inspiration dice, but must decide before the DM says whether the roll succeeds or fails. Once the Bardic Inspiration die is rolled, it is lost. A creature can have only one Bardic Inspiration die at a time, and you can use this feature a number of times equal to your Charisma modifier, and a minimum of once. And you gain any expanded uses when you finish a long rest. And Bards get spells known instead of prepared spells, so you have to keep them separate from your Cleric spells, and use the correct ability modifier. At first level, Bards get two cantrips known and four spells known. For the cantrips, Vicious Mockery is a must, and some other good choices are Mage Hand, Prestidigitation, and Thunderclap. For the four spells known, some good choices take are Charm Person, Identify, Dissonant Whispers, Silvery Barbs, and Tasha's Hideous Laughter. She gets one more first level spell slot and two second level spell slots. And at fourth level, she takes second level of Bard. She gets Jack of All Trades, adding half of her proficiency bonus rounded down to any ability check that already doesn't include her proficiency bonus. She also gets Song of Rest. She can tell a story to help revitalize her wounded allies during a short rest. If she or any friendly creature who can hear her performance regains hit points at the end of the short rest by spending one or more hit dice, each of those creatures regains an extra d6 hit points. And there's an optional feature, Magical Inspiration, if it's used in your game. Mm -hmm. If a creature has a Bardish Inspiration die from you and casts a spell that restores hit points or deals damage, the creature can roll that die and choose a target affected by the spell. Add the number rolled as a bonus to the hit points regained or the damage dealt, and then the Bardic Inspiration die is lost. <laughs> for spells, she gets another spell known at first level, and she gets another second level spell slot. Take one of the ones I mentioned in the last level that you didn't take already. As a bard, she also gets proficiency with simple weapons, rapiers, hand crossbows, long swords, and short swords. So now she's somewhat more effective with her weapons, but still prefers to use spells and cantrips when she must fight. Yeah, definitely. At fifth level, she takes third level of bard. She can, she can expertise two skills, and we want performance and persuasion. For her bard at college, she wants even more people to hear and understand the greatness of her leader and party. So she takes the bard at college of eloquence. She, gains, she gets two abilities. First is silver tongue. Whenever you make a persuasion or deception check, you treat a roll of nine or lower on a d20 as a 10. The second ability is unsettling words. As a bonus action, you can spend one of your uses of bardic inspiration and choose one creature that you can see within 60 feet of you. Roll the bardic inspiration dice, and the creature must subtract the rolled number from the next saving throw it makes before the start of your next turn. For spells, she gets one more spell known that can now be of second level and two third level spell slots. Some good choices are hold person, lester restoration, mirror image, and shatter. Her cantrips improve, gaining an additional dice of damage. This is the build Andrew Haxby asked for, but we are still missing the inspiring leader feed. To change that, you could have taken the human variant instead of Mountain Dwarf to get it from the beginning, but for this build, we will be taking it now. At 6th level, she takes 4th level of Bard, getting an ability booster feat, and we will be taking the inspiring leader feed. You spend 10 minutes inspiring your companions, shoring up their resolve to fight. 
When you do so, choose up to six friendly creatures that can include yourself within 30 feet of you that can see or hear you and who understand you. Each creature gains temporary hit points equal to your level plus your charisma modifier. And each creature can't gain temporary hit points from this feat again until you finish a short or long rest. For spells at this level, she gets another cantrip known, a spell known of second level, and another third level spell slot. For the cantrip known, take one I mentioned at third level, and for the spell known, take one I mentioned last level. We gave several options at each level, so... <laughs> Things have been going smoothly for our handmaiden and her companions. Thanks to her storytelling, the tales of their travels have reached far and wide. She thinks it's the best for the group if she furthers her studies in her faith. So at 7th level, she takes 3rd level of Cleric. All she gets at this level is another spell she can prepare that can be of 2nd level and one 4th level spell slot. If you didn't take Hold Person or Lesser Restoration before, you could take one now since they are also on the Cleric list. Or you could take Prayer of Healing or Silence instead. From the Peace Domain, she gets the spells Aid and Warding Bond prepared for free, and they don't count against the number of spells she can prepare a day. At 8th level, she continues her Cleric studies, taking 4th level of Cleric. She gets an Ability Booster feat, and she will boost her Charisma to 18. She is doing this because she wants to make her spell DC for her Bard spells higher. For spells, she gets another Cantrip known, another spell she can prepare of 2nd level, and gets another 4th level spell slot. For the Cantrip, take one that you didn't take at 1st level, and for the prepared spell, if you haven't taken it, take Silence now. It is a great spell to stop enemy spellcasters. At ninth level, her devotion to the goddess Baranor is becoming stronger, and she takes 5th level of Cleric. Her turn undead channel divinity now destroys undead when they fail their save, and they have a CR of 1 half or lower. For spells, she gets another spell she can't prepare of 3rd level now, and one 5th level spell slot. Some good choices of third level spells are Dispel Magic, Mass Healing Word, Revivify, Spirit Guardians, and Spirit Shroud. From her Peace Domain, she gets the spells Beacon of Hope and Sending prepared for free, and they don't count against the number of spells she can't prepare a day. At tenth level, she takes her sixth and last level of Cleric. She can now use her Channel Divinity two times between short or long rests, and from the Peace Domain, she gets Protective Bond. When a creature affected from your Emboldening Bond feature is about to take damage, a second bonded creature within 30 feet of the first can use its reaction to teleport to an unoccupied space within 5 feet of the first creature, and the second creature then takes all the damage instead. This is a major ability, and I wanted to get it as fast as possible for this build. For spells, she gets another spell she can prepare of 3rd level, and another 5th level spell slot. Take a spell I mentioned last level now that you didn't take before. At 11th level, she takes 5th level Bard. Her Barding Inspiration dice improves to a d8. She also gets Font of Inspiration, allowing her to regain all uses of Bardic Inspiration on a short or long rest. For spells, she gets another spell known that can be a third level now, and one sixth level spell slot. If you want to be a great support character, this spell is a must. Leomid's Tiny Hut. You create a 10 foot radius dome of force that protects you from spells and creatures, so you and your companions can rest peacefully. There's more to this spell description, so make sure to look it up. And her cantrips improve, dealing an additional dice of damage. And at 12th level, she takes 6th level Bard. The first ability is Counter Charm. As an action, she can start a performance that lasts until the end of her next turn. During that time, she and any friendly creatures within 30 feet have advantage on saving throws against being frightened or charmed. A creature must be able to hear her to gain this benefit. The performance ends early if she is incapacitated or silenced, or if she voluntarily ends it. No action required. And the next ability is from her Bardic College called Unfailing Inspiration. When a creature adds one of her Bardic Inspiration dice to its ability check, attack roll, or saving throw, and the roll fails, the creature can keep the Bardic Inspiration die. And the last ability she gets is Universal Speech. As an action, she chooses one or more creatures within 60 feet of her, up to a number equal to her Charisma modifier, minimum of one creature. The chosen creature can magically understand her regardless of the language she speaks for one hour. Once she uses this feature, she can't use it again until she finishes a long rest, unless she expends a spell slot to use it again. Mm -hmm. For spells, all she gets is a spell known of third level. If you didn't take Dispel Magic or Mass Healing Word before, take one of them now. And if you did, then take Bestow Curse or Fear now. Yeah. Although their travels have been tough, and sometimes it didn't look like they would survive, all of them have managed to make it back in one piece. It was after one of these long journeys that her leader and friend, the Valkyrie, came to ask her a favor. I have grown quite close to the champion of Clangadin, and I am going to ask for his hand in marriage. The handmaiden was beside herself with happiness. She knew how long the Valkyrie had feelings for him, and was waiting for the day that it would be made official. And on that note, I wish for you to preside over the wedding. 
Upon hearing these words, tears streamed down her face. It felt like she was finally accepted as an equal, not just a handmaiden. Although her foster family has always treated her as an equal, her common birth has always made her feel as if she were somehow lesser, especially since she's often served as her sister's handmaiden. But now she truly feels as though she belongs. The Valkyrie, seeing her friends in tears, gives her a big hug and says, Your parents would be so proud. All the handmaiden could do was nod and whisper, Yes, my lady, it will be an honor. The marriage celebration was a grand occasion. Her foster sister was well-loved among the clan and has earned great honor, and her husband-to-be was renowned as a warrior and admired by many. During the celebration, her thoughts turned to perhaps marrying one day herself, and seeing the dwarf she admires standing beside her sister's groom in the ceremony gives her ideas on who she might one day like to marry. At 13th level, she takes 7th level bard. She gets another spell known of 4th level and a 7th level spell slot. Some good 4th level spells are Dimension Door, Greater Invisibility, Phantasmal Killer, and Rowlatham's Psychic Lands. At 14th level, she takes 8th level Bard, getting an Ability Score Booster feat, and we're going to boost her Wisdom to 18 to get more hit points when healing and help with her Cleric spells. For spells, all she gets is a spell known of 4th level, so take one I mentioned last level that you didn't already take. At 15th level, she takes 9th level Bard. The Healing or Song of Rest restores, improves to a D8. For spells, she gets another spell known of 5th level, and she gets an 8th level spell slot. Some good 5th level spells are Greater Restoration, Mass Cure Wounds, or Teleportation Circle. Mm -hmm. At 16th level, she takes 10th level of Bard. She can expertise 2 skills, and she picks Insight and Perception. And her Bardic Inspiration dice improves to a d10 here. She learns her first magical secrets. They can be 2 spells from any list that she has the spell level to cast. For her first spell, she takes Destructive Wave from the Paladin list. She sorely lacks a good damaging spell, and this is one of the best in the game, so this one will help with that. And for the second, she takes Holy Weapon from the Cleric spell list. This is a great buffing spell for an ally that spends most of its time on the front lines. For spells, she just gets a cantrip known, so let's take either Friends or True Strike. At 17th level, she has become renowned among the clan and beyond. She is asked to recite the sagas at all the major feasts and is called to act as a diplomat when dealing with the humans and the elves, who she is well respected among. She is also an important figure in the church. Although there are others with more studies and devotion, there are none who rival her at arbitrating disputes and spreading the message of unity and harmony. Her longtime companion, the constable, who has helped guide them on their quest, is starting to return her interest, and she thinks that in time she might become a wife like her sister, but there is no hurry. They are still young, not even 150 years old. So if it takes a few more decades to overcome his shyness, she doesn't mind waiting. She takes 11th level of Bard. All she gets at this level is another spell known that could be of 6th level and 1 ninth level spell slot. Take Mass Suggestion. It is a great crowd control spell, but it also works well with your storytelling background. Her cantrips improve, dealing an additional dice of damage here. At 18th level, she takes 12th level of Bard. She gets an ability score booster a feat, and she is going to cap her charisma at 20. For spells, she just gets another 5th level spell slot. And at 19th level, she takes 13th level of Bard. The healing restored by her Song of Rest improves to a D10, and she gets another spell known of 7th level and another 6th level spell slot. Take Resurrection. You might be the only one in your party that can get it, so take it now. And finally, at 20th level, she and her companions are revered as heroes among the clan, and she has become the clan's chief diplomat, serving as an emissary between the clans and the voice of her people when dealing with other races. She takes 14th level of Bard. From her Bardic College, she gets Infectious Inspiration. When a creature within 60 feet of you adds one of your Bardic Inspiration dice to an ability check, attack, roll, or saving throw, and the roll succeeds, you can use a reaction to encourage a different creature, other than yourself, that can hear you within 60 feet of you, giving it a Bardic Inspiration dice without expending any of your Bardic Inspiration uses. You can use this reaction a number of times equal to your Charisma modifier with a minimum of one, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. She also gets her second use of magical secrets. They can be of 7th level now. She still needs some damaging spells. So now she takes Crown of Stars from the Wizard list and Firestorm from the Druid list. She also gets another 7th level spell slot. This is a great support character. It has spells to buff allies and debuff enemies. With her low strength, melee isn't a good option, but she can still hold her own with her short sword when necessary if she runs out of spells, and she has enough hit points to last until the frontline fighters can regroup and take over. If you have any questions, comments, or build requests, please leave them in the comments section below. 
Next week, we'll be finishing up our Dwarven party with our very inquisitive Rogue Ranger combination. So look forward to that. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.